What's up, everybody? It's Critical. Just kidding, it's Jay Aubrey, but today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. This video will not be scripted, it's not really gonna be edited all that much. It's just gonna be me responding to Chris Ingham's recent response video, if that makes sense. I'm sure a lot of you know at this point, uh, Chris Ingham has been in some pretty hot water as of late. T to, to say the very least. I made a video on it, several other people have made videos on it. If you don't know much about it, I, I would recommend going and watching that first, or else you're not gonna understand anything in this video. But finally, he's he's broke his silence, and he's come out with this 22 minute video explaining why he's been quiet for so long. And I have forced myself to watch this video twice now, and it, it is still, even after two viewings, it, it's one of the worst apology videos you could find. I mean, it's not even really... I'm reluctant to call it an apology video, because he doesn't apologize for anything. In fact, he denies every single allegation that's been put forward, which I don't see how you can do. I, you know, I mean, just look, look, looking at the evidence. So let, we're just going to go through. We're, we're going to go through and uh, talk about each of... Well, not each of his points, because that would make for a really, really long video, and I'm trying not to do that. It's one in the morning, and i got to get up in five hours. I, no, no, thank you. I, I don't want to do that. So we're going to try to keep it as short as we can, but there, there is a lot to get into here, don't get me wrong. Also, I'm really tired of staring at this one single frame where it looks like he's simultaneously sneezing and nutting at the same time. So we're, we're going to go ahead and jump into it, I think. All right, guys, so I'm going to be talking to you right now about a few of the things that have been going on behind the scenes with me and my family over the past couple of months. So let me start from the top. The only reason that I have stayed quiet and not addressed this until now was because of the advice given to me by our legal team. We have some of the best lawyers in the country that support me, that support us as a family, that support our business. All right, so not even a minute into this, and he's already talking about how great his lawyers are. Saying that, like, we have the best lawyers in the country at the beginning of a video like this, like at the very start of, of your response video, after months of radio silence, it's just a really peculiar way to uh to kick things off because what you're saying right like i don't know if this was intentional or not you're inadvertently scaring other victims into their their own silence because you're saying that you have you know the the greatest lawyers on the case oh, oh my god guys we have the best legal team in the country they're they're coming for you okay we're, we're locked and loaded we are prepared for anything that is coming our way so back off that's the message he's sending out here. And I, again, I don't know if he's doing that on purpose or not. I don't know his intentions. That's how it registers for me, and I'm sure it does for a lot of people, and especially the victims who have already come forward. I can, I can only imagine, dude, how, how they must feel um, with a video like this. And again, we're not even a minute in. We're, we're not even a minute in. Oh, my God. And due to the nature of the things that people online have portrayed me as being, taking and acting on the advice of our legal team in this has been the most important thing for us to do. That alone is the only reason I have stayed quiet on this and not addressed this until now. The only reason. Nothing to do with being guilty. Okay, so this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, if I had someone come out against me, right, and make all these ridiculous claims that weren't true about me or my character or whatever I stand for, I would vehemently oppose that person and those allegations and I would I'd be doing anything I could to make my voice heard to address the situation to get my side of the story out there as quickly as possible now I know he his his management team put out a statement on his Twitter um, shortly after the allegations came out. I feel like that's different than him coming out and making his own statement that's uh, maybe a bit more personal, that's um, maybe a bit more sincere, I guess. Am I a pedophile? No. Hell no. Am I a sexual predator? No. No. Have I ever done anything that could be classed as being sexually inappropriate to anybody? No. So this part you kind of have to pay attention. I'm not going to make any any outrageous claims. I don't want to state any any um, crazy facts or anything. I'm just going to give my 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 own personal theory. He does not look comfortable saying the statement. Am I a sexual predator? No. Am I a pedophile? No. He doesn't look um, 
like he's saying that with confidence. And again, I, I could be completely wrong. Maybe I'm just looking too far into it. But when, when a person lies to you, right, all of their mannerisms change. And if you pay attention to the eyes, especially a good indication that somebody is lying to you is they'll start to blink profusely just over and over for no reason. Again, I could be reading into it too far. I don't know. Uh, that's just that's just kind of what I'm getting from it. Maybe I'm wrong, you know? Tell me I'm wrong in the comments. I'm sure you'll do that anyway. So just go ahead, just, you know, just let me know. Just let me a comment. Tell me, hey, you're fucking wrong, okay? You're wrong. You're, you're making bold bold statements, bold theories here. No, you know, you can't you can't claim something like that. I don't know, it's what I take away from it at least. You feel free to disagree, I don't really care. People like to jump on a bandwagon. People like to get involved and put their two penneth in, put their opinion across. And it's very easy to do so from behind the screen of a phone or the screen of a computer. Very easy to seduce vulnerable 16-year-old fans from behind the uh, screen of a phone or a computer too, Chris. But the one thing in all of this that really disturbs me is the complete and utter lack of regard for my children in all of this. Those poor, innocent girls that don't deserve any of this. <sighs> okay, so this is just a matter of time before he brings this up. Um, not even, not even four minutes in, he's already deflecting. Obviously, his family, his wife, his kids, they don't deserve hate. They don't deserve any of this, frankly. You know, it sucks that once somebody like this is outed for doing something just c completely heinous and wrong, that, you know, everybody that he affiliates with also gets flack. His family didn't do anything. His kids didn't do anything. And they don't, they don't deserve any hate whatsoever. And I'm completely against any type of harassment that comes his way or his family's way. But the only reason he's bringing this up here, right, instead of talking about the issue, instead of talking about why Jess is lying, is to deflect. He wants to direct attention to the amount of pain that's been brought onto his family, even though he's the one <laughs> who's, who's kind of brought it on himself. He really only has himself to blame. Um, he doesn't talk about the pain that's, that he's brought on to Jess and Bella, uh, any other victim that's in this equation. And the fact that he has the nerve to even act like anybody besides him is responsible for the waves of hate that he's been getting. It's just so messed up. It's, it's so messed up to me. And you'll notice he resorts to this point multiple times throughout the video because it's really the only crutch he has left at this point. Using my name in every wrong and disgusting way that you can right now. Okay, so as I just said, he's chastising us for talking about it all, you know. I'm not referring to the idiots who are sending death threats. Like, leaking his info, doxing him, that's that's an entirely different animal. And as I said earlier, it's not acceptable in any context. It's never acceptable. But he's speaking pretty broadly here, and I can only assume he's talking to everybody who's ever brought attention to him in general. Uh, the victims, the YouTubers, just regular people who, who are, on, you know, on Twitter talking about the situation. Any of them could be classified as keyboard warriors in this case. So as long as you're bringing attention and, and, you know, directing new eyes onto the subject, he hates you because you ruined his family. Not like he did that on his own, of course. That'd be ridiculous. Yet without a single second's thought to the seriousness and the damage that you're causing on the other side of it. Not just to my life and not just to Sarah's life, but more importantly, to my girls' lives. You might as well just be talking to a mirror right now. The only thing that Sarah and I are feeling right now is the worst worry and anxiety that you could imagine about the fact that our children are probably going to go back to school this term and be relentlessly bullied by people, ignorantly and misguidedly, relentlessly bullied by people who misguidedly... <laughs> okay. Messed up on your script there for a second, Chris. It's all right, happens to the best of us. I noticed you're looking down a few times, but I guess that blip right there confirms it. You're not being genuine. You're not being raw. You're, you're just spouting off the most cookie cutter response you could write. And also, what do you mean misguidedly? There's been screenshot after screenshot after screenshot after screenshot crop up recently from a, from a slew of different girls. If it's misguided to actually believe the shocking amount of proof that numerous people have now put forth Forward, I guess we're all fucking misguided. Like, what parent should ever have to go through that? I don't know, probably one that actually groomed several fans. Never in my life have I ever done anything that could be even remotely considered that. Not ever. I'm just a normal, 
hard-working husband and father. R normal, normal guy. Ah, look at me, guys. I'm just like you. I put my pants on one leg at a time. I eat the delicious breakfast my loving wife prepares for me in the morning. Then I proceed to make an estimate of $230,000 a year while grooming 16-year-old girls on the side. Just like you! All of the continued relentless harassment that Sarah and I are facing online at the minute, especially on Twitter, is disgusting. It's absolutely outrageous. And that alone is the only reason Sarah and I no longer have our Twitter accounts. Nothing to do with the fact that we're guilty. Nothing to do with the fact we're guilty. Freudian slip, Chris? There are people dedicating their lives right now to try and taint every single aspect of mine and Sarah's lives. <sighs> this is the internet, Chris. When people think you've done something demonstrably wrong, they come for your throat, and the throats of your family, too. It's sad, it's wrong, it isn't justified in any way. I, I wish it wasn't happening to your family, but that's how people are. That's just, that's how it works. That's how it's always worked. And maybe you should have considered the well-being of your loved ones before you asked a 16-year-old girl to skinny dip with you. I don't know, just, just a thought. We can't even use our own personal Instagram accounts to show our followers, the people that support us every day, pictures that we want to show them, videos that we want to show them, because when we do, they're just spammed relentlessly with absolutely disgusting comments, untrue statements, and rubbish beyond belief by anonymous accounts, even not anonymous accounts, just people who are completely and utterly misguided in what they're thinking. Okay, so you're really you're you're gonna blame someone for being misguided when you got shit like this floating around the internet. I'm at a loss for words. How how are people supposed to react? This you can't just like look at this and be like ah. Ah, yeah, it's, it's probably not real. It's, you know, people fake this kind of stuff. These girls, uh, you know, they're, they're making it up. They're, they're just, they just want the publicity. They just want the fame, you know. They're in it for the money. They're in it for the money. That's a real comment I got. They're in it for, they're in it for the money. What? So we need to sell that house and move to somewhere much more private where nobody knows our address and we can feel safe again. I've actually heard rumors of this. Uh, so, so knowing that they're actually moving is really a shame. It shouldn't be like that. And honestly, I, you know, it's, it's really, really, really messed up for someone to leak, um, their address. That shouldn't have happened. That's, there's no justification for that whatsoever. And it really does suck that they're having to move because of it. Calling somebody publicly the disgusting things and wrong things that people have been calling me is such a dangerous thing to do. All right, so this part, it kind of seems like he's directing at the victims. Um, he, you know, oh guys, it's, it's dangerous to say this kind of stuff about me. It's, it's dangerous, not, not only for my family, but for me as well. Yeah, the girls did nothing wrong, Chris. I hate to tell you, they, they have every right to come forward and speak their truth, whereas you're in no position to shut them down and potentially scare other victims uh, into staying quiet. That's, stop. Stop, please. All because they've got some misguided and wrong idea that I'm interested in children. Take a shot every time he says misguided and you'll be hammered before the halfway point. Smaller YouTubers that maybe get one to 200 views per video now do a video on exposing Chris Ingham and they get a couple of hundred thousand views. So the same small YouTuber then does multiple videos using my name in the title, exposing Chris Ingham version two or whatever it may be and they keep these views rolling in and rolling in. All, all just to gain their own personal following, to increase their own public profile, to earn money from monetization, whatever it might be. When a big issue like this surfaces, they're just gonna be, you're gonna get your fair share of, of cretins who don't care and are just trying to leech off the situation for views and money for that sweet, sweet ad revenue. I can't speak for anybody else who's made videos or talked about it, but I, I can at least speak for myself and say that my intentions have never been view-driven. If I wanted to get views, I'd just post a six-minute video of me reading subreddits in an Australian accent. So now I'm not doing this for views or the money. My channel isn't even monetized. I'm, I'm doing this because I think it's important people know. If you're not gonna fess up to your own mistakes, Chris, that doesn't mean other YouTubers much bigger than I am aren't going to hold your feet to the fire. Whether it's someone huge or someone minuscule, you're not, you're not gonna be able to run away from this quite as easily as you may think. All of the people that are posting these disgusting, wrong, completely incorrect, 
and defamatory statements about me online right now. The ones that are trying so hard to destroy the Ingham family. Why? Why would anybody want to do that to a family? Okay, so let, let's just apply that same question to your stance. Shall we? You're denying every allegation. So in turn, you're painting Jess, the original victim, as a liar. Jess claimed to be a fan of your channel, hence why she wanted to meet up with you in the first place. And now she's coming out and saying that you're a creep and saying that you tried to groom her the entire time while at the hotel. So why would Jess even want to make any of it up if she's been such an adamant fan of the Ingham family. If it wasn't true, then why would she feel the need to come after your reputation, Chris? And why would she have waited several months to do so? She has nothing to gain from this. I mean, you could say attention, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. Why would this random 16-year-old girl want this kind of notoriety? It just doesn't, doesn't add up to me. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm, maybe I'm stupid. Maybe that's it. I just, doesn't make sense to me. Really doesn't.